This film told the story of a man named Nick Naylor, who worked to defend the tobacco institution called the Big Tobacco. Nick was invited to a talk show to talk about the anti-smoking campaign held by the government. Among the guests who were invited were Ron Good and Robin Williger. Ron was a representative of Senator Finister from the Pulmonary Institute, a very opposite party to Nick, while Robin is a student with a bright future, but recently was sentenced to malignant cancer caused by cigarettes. Since then, he was enough of smoking, but that view was immediately debunked by Nick, who said that after all, Nick wanted Robin to live in smoke. He also attacked the opposing party, namely Ron, they were the ones who wanted Robin to die. The scene continued at his son's school, where he was invited to talk about his job. Some of the other fathers were firefighters or pilots, a dream job for most kids. Meanwhile, Nick had to explain that he was a figure that was responsible for thousands of deaths in America every day. Seeing his father, Joey worried that he would embarrass him, but on the other hand, Nick casually tried explaining his work in child-friendly language as a spokesperson for smoking. And when the child said that smoking kills, Nick asked them not to immediately believe it otherwise. Asked them to find out the truth. Hearing this, the homeroom teacher immediately stopped Nick's presentation for fear of the students will receive a wrong understanding. After giving a very bad presentation, Nick joined with other fellow speakers nicknamed the Merchant of Death or the M.O.G. Squad. The first member is Polly Bailey, the alcohol queen who is a member of the Moderation Council and had legalized most of the strict drinking rules. Polly is also called the Mother of Burgundy. Then there's Bobby J. Bliss, the gunface who worked for an organization called SAFETLI or Society for the Advancement of Firearms and Effective Training for Youth. In general, they face the same difficulty that is against public ethics in every meeting they use for sharing and brainstorming sessions. At night, Joey asked Nick to help with homework about why America has the best government in the world. Nick seemed a bit disagree about the statement because stating something to be the best, of course, needed a benchmark for that. Nick then ordered Joey to write anything about America's greatness, such as how America raised world market prices, the way America executed criminals, and so on. All of that is the correct answer, but Joey wondered if that was the right answer. Nick then answered that it was the art of debating. No one was wrong. Then, Joey asked if he could stay all night if he managed to finish the task in an hour. Nick refused and said that was a negotiation and that he could disagree with that. The next day, Jill, Nick's ex-wife, was already waiting for Joey to come home. Nick then asked to be able to extend his time with Joey, but Jill refused on the ground that they already have their own parts where she had Joey for the weekdays, while Nick had him for the weekends. The scene continued at a TV station where Senator Finister, who spoke on behalf of the Pulmonary Institute, proposed a skull symbol to be placed on each pack of cigarettes. He also invited Nick to represent the Big Tobacco in the next Congress meeting. Seeing this, Nick's boss, BR, went mad because the campaign had greatly reduced cigarette sales. None of the meeting members dared to give an idea, but not Nick. With his distinctive and charismatic style, he stood up and said that they could make cigarettes victorious again by putting them in a movie scene, like those films in the 70s. Back then, cigarettes had always been shown as cool and sexy in every film, causing cigarettes to go viral. This was what gave him the idea to revive the smoking culture, with the help of the world of films. After presenting an idea that his boss didn't really appreciate, Nick was told to go to see Captain, a very successful tobacco businessman who also founded an academy of tobacco studies which aimed to research as much as possible the effect of tobacco on the environment, especially human health. When they met, Nick's figure reminded Captain of his youth where he was full of enthusiasm and dedication. He also told Nick to go meet a big Hollywood agent in California to ask him to bribe his talents to smoke on the screen. After chatting, Nick was escorted to the airport. It was seen how Captain really liked him as he was taken home using Tobacco One, a luxury private jet that has sophisticated features complete with beautiful flight attendants. Seeing there was an opportunity for a vacation, Nick called and asked Jill to allow Joey to join him on his business trip to California, but unfortunately, she refused because Nick would be a bad influence on Joey. The scene continued to the meeting of the Melody Squad at a cafe where Nick asked if they knew a journalist named Heather, and with sparkling eyes, Bobby immediately replied that she was a beautiful journalist with all the charms of an English woman, therefore Nick had to be careful not to be seduced by her, knowing that all men would open their mouth just by the charms of women. The next day, Nick met with Heather, the beautiful journalist. Accompanied by a bottle of wine, they were talking like they were no strangers. And as time went by, Heather, who was spellbound by Nick, asked him to see where he lived with the excuse that she wanted to see where he was sleeping, and as expected, they ended up enjoying their night together in bed. The scene moved to Jill's house. She was preparing breakfast when suddenly, Joey asked why he couldn't go with his father. Jill replied that California was very dangerous and not worth visiting, especially with his father. Then Joey asked if maybe he was used as an object for her anger towards Nick, because he thought that this trip was a very good opportunity to get to know his father. 
But if it was true, he said that he wouldn't mind. Upon hearing that, Jill now had no other choice but to let him go with his father. When Nick picked Joey up from Jill's house, he asked how he convinced his mother to let him go with him. Joey answered that he made an argument she couldn't refute. When they arrived in California, Nick and Joey went straight to the entertainment global offices where they were taken around by an assistant. The guy explained that every corner of the room in the building was designed by his boss, and after a short tour, finally, Jeff and Nick met. Jeff is a director who had almost the same life principle as Nick, where he didn't mind if he had to make the actors smoke, regardless of health issues. Jeff was just a facilitator, not a doctor. He immediately accepted the cooperation with the big tobacco. The next day, Nick received a suitcase from Captain, and it turned out that Captain contained money in it. Captain then called and told him to go meet Lauren Lutch, the one who once played the role of the Marlboro Man in cigarette ads, who was dying of lung cancer. Apparently, he wanted to shut Lauren's mouth so as not to raise the problem of his illness to the media. Joey insisted to come along even though Nick was worried because this was not a safe trip, knowing a cowboy would never take a bribe. When Nick arrived at the front of the house, Lauren came out of the house with a shotgun in his hand. He threatened to shoot him, but when Joey came out of the car, Lauren was immediately discouraged. He then invited them to go inside. Apparently, he already knew the purpose of Nick's coming there, but instead of asking for Lauren to accept the bribe, Nick instead ordered him to expose his bribery act to the media while giving an example of the dramatic scene of spilling millions of dollars on the floor. He told Lauren to tell the media that he would donate all of the bribe money to the Cancer Foundation. And you pour all the cash, every last bundle out. After seeing a lot of money in front of him, Lauren finally accepted the money for his family. When they were on their way home, Joey asked the reason behind his father's dramatic act before. Nick replied that it was the work of a lobbyist where he had to have flexible morals, just like a lawyer, who had to defend a murderer even though he knows that is wrong. If one was based on the right arguments, this work will never be wrong. Nick then went to attend the talk show with the leader of the anti-smoking campaign, Senator Finister himself. During the show, they received a call, but when the host picked up the call, the caller rudely yelled at Nick and threatened Nick that in a week, he would be eliminated. Everyone in the studio, including Joey, was shocked and devastated by that statement. Shortly after, Nick went to meet his friends, the MOV squad. Polly said that she might need a bodyguard considering her high-risk job, and she felt that she was almost kidnapped by a group of activists. But Nick said that her job was not as risky as his job. He also compared the number of deaths caused by cigarettes with alcohol and firearms, where cigarettes are superior with more than 1,200 deaths every day. Without him realizing it, he had lowered the pride of his two friends. When he was on his way home, he was intercepted and taken by a van. He was given a lot of nicotine patches all over his body and was told not to continue his smoking campaign, but before he could even say anything, he lost consciousness and was later found almost naked on the lap of the Lincoln statue. After going through severe nicotine poisoning, Nick woke up in the hospital ward and found all of his family and friends already there. The doctor said that Mike could not smoke again for the rest of his life and even smoking one cigarette even it can make him paralyzed again. He also said that it was a miracle that Nick was still alive because if a non-smoker had this much nicotine poisoning, he would have died. In front of him, there was also a screen where there was Captain speaking through it. He was being treated for a heart attack, but he couldn't get in the same room with Nick for various reasons. Without further ado, Nick was asked to be willing to be interviewed because the press was waiting for him outside, and as soon as Nick showed up, Nick immediately said that cigarettes had saved his life. He also couldn't wait to attend a congressional meeting with Senator Finister. Long story short, Nick's condition had improved and had started working again. But one morning, they were surprised by a newspaper that contained an article about Nick. Heather, the journalist, wrote in detail how Nick wanted to deceive the people of the United States by saying that cigarettes are not bad. She also wrote down all the information including the meaning of the merchant of death, which vied with each other to get the highest number of deaths. Then Heather also wrote about the bribery of actors involving a famous Hollywood director, the Marlboro man Lauren Lutch. Heather even wrote that Joey, his own son, was trained to become his father's successor during the business trip. After reading the article, it was clear that Nick was cheated because he believed Heather too much. Heather said that she was doing all this just for the sake of her job. The image Nick built immediately was mired as well as his career because he had been fired by BR. No one could help Nick, including Captain, because he had just died that morning. After attending Captain's funeral that morning, Nick shut himself in his apartment and mourned his life. Shortly after, Joey and Jill came. Joey then asked Nick to rise again to be a person who always has a way to make things right as he always did. Someone who is talented in turning things around. Nick finally had an idea so he could enter the Congress meeting and discussing the skull symbol on cigarettes. The next day, Nick was suddenly surrounded by the press. On TV broadcasts, he promised to clean up the names that had been tainted because of him. 
He then loudly warned the audience not to have sexual relations with members of the press, especially with a young brown-haired woman from the Washington Post, sarcastically referred to as Heather. He also clarified if he still wanted to be invited by members of the Senate to share his knowledge about the baked tobacco. Not long after, Senator Finister's office was flooded with calls, asking them to include Nick Naylor back in the Congress meeting as an invited guest. When Nick and the Emeldic squad arrived at the venue, they were greeted by journalists. They then entered the room. As the meeting passed, a doctor and public figure had given their views on the dangers of smoking and the importance of adding a picture of a skull to each pack. Then it came to Nick's turn. He said that even though he was now unemployed, he was previously a deputy director of the Academy of Tobacco Studies. He also presented the Academy's latest findings, that smoking can compensate for Parkinson's disease. When asked about the dangers of cigarettes, Nick agreed to the statement. Senator Finister was quite surprised because it was unusual for Nick to accept the fact. Even so, Nick felt that adding a skull symbol to cigarettes was unnecessary because all things have the potential to cause death. He said that the largest number of deaths in America were caused by cholesterol. Ironically, Senator Finister came from an area famous for its cheddar cheese, which according to Nick, the cheese had clogged the arteries of lots of Americans so a skull logo might be better added to each pack of cheese. Therefore, the most important thing was to educate children about all the possible dangers of the world so that one day when they grow up, they can choose their life choices wisely. Shortly thereafter, Nick was asked to leave the courtroom. He was immediately surrounded by journalists, asking him if he will continue his job at the Big Tobacco. He firmly replied that he had turned down the offer to work there. A few months later, the cigarette company finally reconciles with the American citizens, the Academy of Tobacco Studies was disbanded and BR became unemployed. Heather still worked as a reporter, Joey, on the other hand, had won a debate competition, and the Memo squad had recruited more members. Meanwhile, Nick had opened his own consultant office with several clients who seemed very satisfied with his service.